CataractCoach.com. This chop looked good, but the nuclear halves did not separate. We have an anonymous resident surgeon operating here, and we're finishing up the capsorexis, and I'll show you just the fake out uh, nucleus removal of this case. So you can see it's a nice round capsorexis, well centered, appropriate size, about five millimeters in diameter. Cataract is of typical density, maybe two to three plus nuclear sclerosis. So here comes the hydro dissection. You'll see good fluid waves going across and then tapping the center of the nucleus. Another good fluid wave. And so this is a very good hydro dissection. You want to make sure the nucleus can spin and there you saw it spin. So it looks great. Now this is a resident who's done about 300 cataracts so the hands are pretty good. And you'll see the chop works initially pretty well but the issue is a failure to separate the two halves. So putting the phaco probe in the eye, it's going to be a high vacuum level here, high flow, moderate power. So buzzing in with the phaco probe. Here we can see squirting the cornea first. So there's the phaco probe, good placement, sub incisionally, beautiful. Chopper goes in. There's the half, but it's still connected. So there's not enough of a separation. Then you see the eye coming away from the primary position. Surgeon's not doing a great job of controlling the eye position. See the light reflex is not in the center of the cornea. So the surgeon here needs to, there you go, recenter the eye, that's a little better. But these halves need to be separated and the key move now is to be deeper within the groove. So trying to take out a hemi-nucleus at this point is premature. And you'll see as the surgeon buzzes into it, it's difficult to bring the piece out of the bag because that half is still connected to the bottom. See that connection down there? So the nucleus is partially split, but it needs to be fully split in order to bring out one half of the nucleus. So it's trying again, that looks pretty good, but it's still not sufficient. It must be two complete halves. And so in order to achieve that, I recommend spreading in the middle of the nucleus and then more nasally and then more temporally at those three positions. We showed this video last week, which I'll link here in our description. So again, trying to separate the nucleus, it looks pretty good, but there's still some areas of attachment. And I'm gonna show you what becomes here. There's a danger that happens. And that danger is you'll thin out the nucleus too much and there's less tissue to grab onto. So buzzing in with the phaco probe here, that looks pretty good, but it didn't, didn't hold enough because it's still attached. So now look at the central nucleus. It's just hollowed out. We've bowled out the center of the nucleus. There's not a lot of tissue that we can grab onto. And that's gonna make it very difficult and very challenging. And rotate the nucleus and try this again. And at some point, we'll finally be able to bring it out of the bag because by bowling it out, we've debulked the nucleus. So fake probe again, trying to get around a piece, and there we go. Finally, we can get part of the nucleus up. And even now, it's still not separated in two halves. Only at this point do we finally separate the halves. And so the danger again here is that you'll go through the nucleus and hit the posterior capsule. And in this case, that actually happens. Watch carefully, it's very, very subtle. But we'll see here during the case, when we went out to the periphery to try vacuum into the nuclear half, the phaco probe went through the half and nailed the posterior capsule right at the capsule bag equator. So if you didn't notice, it already happened. This is very subtle. Now that second half of the nucleus is being removed. And at this point, the resident surgeon as well did not notice that the posterior capsule had been hit. In fact, if you look here during this nucleus removal, it looks totally normal. Everything looks okay. It's there in the nasal inferior quadrant, infranasal quadrant at the equator of the lens. So it's not very obvious. And what will end up happening is this will pose an issue during irrigation and aspiration. And I'll show you that video next.